and my sisters. The Spirit of the Lord is in control. It's a Wednesday evening that we can come back one more time and study to show ourselves approved. Good evening. Good evening to Sister Smalls Broughton. We thank God for you. Please make sure that Brother Charles and Sister Helen can hear their pastor. I did not hear their voice this week Tuesday, so I want to hear, so let them hear their pastor's voice, and maybe I'll hear their voice on tomorrow. We just thank God for all of you who have joined us this evening. And we just say that this is still the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us just thank God for all the wonderful things that God is doing, has done, and will continue to do. And I don't know about anybody else, but I tell you, I just have to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. And I, I, I my soul gets excited. And as the sound that was playing as we came on this evening, I shall wear a crown. But I want to remind you of something. Where there is no cross, there is no crown. So we can sing, I shall wear a crown, all that we want. Uh, but if you aren't willing to bear your cross, I'm here to tell you, you have got to give God another thought because no cross, no crown. And we just know that God is going to do great things. God is doing great things. And God is about to do even greater things. We're very happy. I, I, I am the elated, the satisfied, and truly blessed pastor of Holy Trinity Amy Church and surrounding areas. Amen. Uh, Lady Holmes and I, we thank you so much for joining us this evening. Lady Holmes is online with us, and we just thank God for her presence and her prayers. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we begin to study our his word to show ourselves approved. 
Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you, we thank you for you being God. We thank you for how you keep on blessing us, even though we don't deserve it. God, we thank you for those who are watching us by Facebook. We thank you for those who are on the teleconference tonight. We thank you, dear God, for all that uh, you just continue to um, you just continue to bless us, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We love you. Um, and we just adore you tonight, and we just ask um, that you take full control study, and, and you just have your way. 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 God, I know someone's going to be blessed tonight. Someone's life will be, as a result, they're going to desire to serve you better. And God, we just thank you tonight. God, we don't wait till the battle is over. God, we shout right now. God, we come against those things of depression. We come against those things that are not of you. We come against those things that have been fighting us. And God, we just say to you tonight that God, we turn it over to you because we know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly that which we can ever ask of you. And God, I praise you tonight for what you are about to do. I praise you in advance for what you're going to do. I praise you tonight, God, because we know that you can do all things but fail. And God, I thank you tonight. And I just say in advance, that is already done. In advance, that is already done. In advance, that is already done. In advance, it's already done. And God, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Them tonight. Go ahead and text somebody. Go ahead and just FaceTime somebody. Tell them it's, it's, it's Bible study. It's Bible talk. Ah, oh, God's going to move tonight. God's going to open up some eyes tonight. God's going to put some of us on the right path that we need to. Ah, oh, God, hallelujah. Go ahead and text somebody. Go ahead and hold your watch. Hold some watch by. Tell somebody it's word time. Studying the word. To show ourselves approved. Oh, my, 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 my God. There is a word tonight. There is a word for us to study tonight. Oh, God. Tis so sweet. Thank you, God. 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 God, we praise you tonight. God, we adore you tonight. And we just thank you so much just in the way of a few announcements we want to remind you that we are continuing to bless god we are continue to do those things that are pleasing unto god we invite you sunday morning just in case i get all caught up with the word uh, we invite you sunday morning at 9 15 through teleconference for our church school which is handled by our church school department we invite you sunday morning at um, 10 o'clock to watch us by facebook or you can stay on the teleconference line and, and still receive the word and the worship experience. Um, on next Thursday night, we will have um, the Holy Trinity Breast Cancer Awareness, and we'll have two panelists who are breast cancer survivors to tell their stories, and we're going to have the opportunity for you to come in. It's going to be on Zoom. So you just pay attention to our Facebook, pay attention to our website. The information will be there. Everybody needs to hear it. Everybody needs to hear it. So next week is a busy week for us, but guess what? To whom much is given, much is required. And I tell folks all the time, when you love what you do, it's not work. It's a career. And we just thank God for the calling. Amen. Amen. So look with me tonight for those of you who have your Bibles with us. And to those who are on the teleconference call tonight, thank you for joining us. And we trust and pray that as a result tonight, and you will have a greater understanding of what God is expecting of us. And so... Thank you again for joining us. Once again, it's not too late. It's not too late. We're just getting started. It's not too late to call someone, to let someone know that crazy preacher is on. Amen? Amen. And somebody you can call may not be far in your house. You can just go to the next room and knock on their door and tell them it's Bible talk time. Amen. Amen. Look with me tonight to the book of Proverbs. Look with me tonight to the book of Proverbs. 
Um, if you join me with the book of Proverbs tonight, and we're going to begin at the very first verse, and we're going to get as far as we can with the time that we have. Amen. Good evening, Sister Frazier. All right. We're going to go as far as we can with the time that we have. Um, but I would like to get the entire 18th chapter, but um, if I can't, God knows. Amen. So we're going to look at Proverbs, the 18th chapter. That's right. Proverbs chapter 18. And um, and we just know that God's going to bless as a result of that. Amen. Amen. God's going to bless as a result of that. So, so, so look with us to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18, beginning at Remember, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, and I, I I want you to understand because it gives me simplicity. I, there are some, some, sometimes I don't need to be in the dials and the those. I just need to be put into simplicity so that I can study and show myself approved unto God and depart the knowledge unto you. So it begins tonight, and you may say, Pastor, why are you bringing this passage of Scripture that seems to be so hard and seems to be so so, so, so rough and, 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 and not all of us are where you are in the Lord and need to be. Well, you know, when God gave me the scripture tonight, I needed us to understand that there are times in our lives, we are going to go through some situations and we are going to start beginning to doubt God and we're going to go through the stages and we're going to go through all the trials. But I want you to know tonight that some of the things, oh, God help me tonight. Some of the things that we're giving the devil credit for, the devil had nothing to do with. You put yourself into that situation because of some of the actions you're going to see in Proverbs 18 tonight. So you better call somebody up and tell them it's going to be tight, but it's going to be right. Proverbs 18 tonight, and we're going to have you to see that some of the issues and some of the circumstances and some of the things that you find yourselves in, amen, we, 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 we have put ourselves into, but... There is a God who knows how to deliver, set free, and gives a, a give us a blessing that we do not have room enough to receive. But Proverbs 18, beginning at chapter 1, says, and I don't want anybody to leave me tonight. If anything, I want y'all to add some more folks on the line. Amen? Uh, Proverbs chapter 18, beginning at verse 1, says, Unfriendly people care only about themselves. Unfriendly people only care about themselves. Remember now, the word says in order to have a friend, you got to what? When we meet unfriendly people, they care only about themselves and they lash out at common sense. Now, let me tell you something. When they lash out at common sense is that there are sometimes you are trying to tell people what is best for them. You're sometimes telling them what God has given you a revelation to share with them. But because they don't want to hear it. It's not making them the center of attention. It's not being the friendly thing. So instead of listening, they lash out. And verse two says, fools have no interest in understanding. Now there are some people, and that's why you've got to learn as Christians, we've got to learn when to walk away. We can't stand there and argue with everyone who we come in contact with. We can't stand there and debate with everyone who is standing there with us. We can't stand there and just, ah, oh, come on, somebody. We just can't stand there and argue, argue, argue for Proverbs 18. We're in Proverbs 18 tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for those of you who are joining on. The Proverbs 18 tonight, in that, 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 that second verse says, fools have no interest in understanding. Ah, they don't want to understand. And then it says, the only want to air their own opinions. Don't call any names. Don't, don't, don't post any names. But all of us know someone tonight. They don't want to hear your side of the story. They just want their opinions to be told. They just want you to hear their side of the story. But as I tell people, and I used to say, as I tell children, but I have to tell adults this now too. There are three sides to every story. There's your side, their side, and then there's the truth. And you better pray that your side falls on the side of the truth. Because there's some people you can be telling them what's in their best interest. But listen to what the word says. The word says the fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. Even, and I say this all the time, and, and, and I want you to pay attention to it. If you've never heard me say it, I want you to pay attention to it tomorrow, whenever you see it. 
Even a broken clock is right two times a day. Think about that now. Even a broken clock, yes, we're in Proverbs 18th chapter, Proverbs the 18th chapter. Even a broken clock is correct two times a day. Because that time that they're stuck on is going to come by two times. If that clock is broken on 11, 12, it's going to be 11, 12, two times during the day, during the 24-hour cycle. So we've got to stop saying that because of certain people, they don't know what they're talking about. They, I, 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 I can't take what they're telling me. I don't want to hear what they have to tell me. I know I, I and what we've got to get beyond grown-ups, but we've got to get beyond adults, but we've got to get beyond parents because if we live long enough, hello, somebody, if we live long enough, our children are going to be smart, wiser. They may be weaker, but they're going to be wiser than we are. How do you think I'm making it through this technology age? Okay, I'm making it because some people who are stronger in technology, that does not mean they're using it effectively, but that means that they're wise. And the Bible says they're going to be born wiser but weaker. So we just can't throw people out based on age because there are some 60-year-olds who are still 20 years old in their maturity when it comes to the word of God. But it says that they only want to hear their own opinions. And verse 3 says, doing wrong, I want you to understand this now, doing wrong leads to disgrace. Stop thinking you can do people wrong, do the wrong things, lie, cheat, and steal, and you are never going to get caught. Because it says in the word, doing wrong leads to disgrace. That's why you have got to be careful. The law says the hand of one is the hand of all, all right? So that's why when our parents were telling us, be careful of the company you keep, they knew what they were talking about. Uh, 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 what we do in the dark is going to come to the light. They knew what they were talking about. Because here in this third verse, it says doing wrong leads to disgrace. Because guess what? There is a stopping point for everybody. You cannot continue to do God's people wrong and get away with it. You can't continue to talk to God's people any kind of way that you feel that you're big and bad enough to do it and think you're going to get away with it. And notice what and scandalous behavior brings contempt. Scandalous behavior brings contempt. Okay, there was a show, y'all lock on a minute, y'all know it was called Scandal. Because there was always something going on. There was always something going on. But that scandalous behavior is going to eventually bring you to the point where you're going to have to give an account for that kind of behavior. And then when, 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 when things happen to us, and I, I know, I know, I don't want to lose anybody. So y'all call and make sure we don't lose anybody. But, but there's some people you have got to, you, 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 you say that, and, and I'm talking to me now, and I hope it sounds like you. You say that the body is a temple. Amen. You say that the body is a temple. Okay. Now, you just can't go wrong and expect your body to stay healthy. And then when you get, when you, when you get these ailments and then you're so quick to say, Oh Lord, by your stripes, I'm here. But, but guess what? You have done wrong for so long that some things God has to have you to realize you're not above me. Okay. Now, fourth verse is wise words. Now hear this. Wise words are like deep waters. And we all know that deep waters run still. And the deeper the water, the prettier it is. It says, wise words are like deep waters. Wisdom flows from the wise like a bubbling brook. Okay? Because, and that's why I want you to understand, people with wisdom can have a spirit of discernment. You know rather this battle is worth fighting. You can't fight every battle that you're faced with. And everything that people throw in your face is not worth your attention. What they want to do is get your attention so that you can get focused off who your daddy is. Because who my daddy is, I have to have certain kind of conversations. Because who my daddy is, I've got to make sure I'm treating people a certain way. And so therefore, it says in the fifth verse, it is not right to acquit the guilty. Woo! Mm. 
or deny justice to the innocent. Now, you you you, you got to understand something. Now, Breonna Taylor and all those whose names I can call a list. Oh, thank you, Sister Lazarus. Every assignment ain't mine. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 uh. All those persons. Now, those persons who have committed those wrongdoings, they must be brought to justice. And I know what you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? When a poor child does it, it's stealing. But when a rich person does it, it's embezzlement. Guess what? It's still what? Wrong. It's still wrong. And we've got to understand that if we are not able, God is telling us in his word tonight that it's not right to let the guilty go free. It's not right. And that's why I say to people with all these riots and all these things, what you've got to do, and I'm not saying I agree with the judicial system, because the hearing that's going on right now in the name of another day, but it's not right to let the guilty go free. But And it's not right to deny justice to the innocent. All of us are due due process. But what I've learned, what I've learned, what I've learned, the more I try to prove that I'm right, the more I mess it up. But when I say what I say, love, then I let God handle the rest. Because God's going to let the truth surface. Amen. Now, I know nobody remembers this, but I know as young as I am, I was a country boy. But there was a time we would get the, um, you know, the cream. Yeah, we'll get the cream. And my mama had what we call a shaker. And while we were there sitting there watching TV, mama had us shaking it and shaking and shaking and shaking it and shaking. And eventually that cream turned into what? Butter. And then what did not make butter? We, my, my mom used to scrape it off the what? Off the top. And you've got to understand, Pastor, why do you say that? I'm saying all of that because I need you to understand that the justice, the innocent is going to surface. Walter Scott, both of his parents are now deceased. But guess what? God allowed them to see justice for their child. And sometimes we have just got to stand still because it's not ours to fight. God will reveal, okay? Then that sixth verse, and I know it's tight, but it's right tonight. The sixth verse says, fool's words get them into constant quarrels. Now, if you, all of us know somebody who always in testing up, like my mom used to say, hallelujah. There's always somebody who's in a, you say that I say that she say that they say that we say. Learn to keep your mouths closed because it says you're going to always be in constant quarrels. And sometimes you might know the right answer, but guess what? The timing is not right. It's not that God does not want you to say it, but the timing is not right. Because God's time is not our time. And so, if you are always in a quarrel, and then you sing, oh, I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. No. Because God's going to give you the words that when you take it to the person, it's going to be done in love. But every time you try to share something, and then I want you to realize now, if every time you show up at a family function, some arguments start, check out the common denominator. Check out the common denominator. If every time you show up somewhere, there's always constant arguments, check the common denominator. Okay? And then it says... They are asking for a beating. Mm -hmm. They are asking for a beating. And you know, I, 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 I had, you know, my, 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 my siblings and I, we used to argue all the time. All, you know, not, not all the time, but you know, when we got into our little spats and my mom was to keep it up. But I'm going to end the argument in a few minutes. And you know how she ended the argument? When we saw the belt, the broom, 
the spoon off the wall, the shoe, whatever she had near her. When we saw it flying, we knew the argument was what? Over. Because you got to understand that if you continuously stir up mess, there's going to, you are asking for a beating. You are asking, and that's why sometimes I say to you, the things that God is allowing to happen to you, the things that God is allowing to happen to America, and yes, I'm saying it tonight, and I don't apologize for it. I need some saints who are willing to stand with me. Some of the things that America is going through tonight is because of the fact that we've allowed the devil to take over. There was a time when the church controlled the community. Not the community controlling the church. Something's wrong with that picture. So we've got to understand, parents, we've got to get to the point that you're not the only one who can rear your child. But if you think you are, guess what? Help yourself. We all need some help. And then the seventh verse says, the mouths of a fool are ruined. Mm. The mouths of a fool is ruined. And then it says, they trap themselves with their lips. Keep talking. Keep talking. You're going to trap yourself in your own lie. Because you, what, what, what we've got to learn to do, what we've got to learn to do, and I still try to teach people this now. If you tell me the truth, I know what I'm up against. But if you tell me a lie and I find out it's a lie, then we got some problems. Because the mouths of a fool, that's their ruin. That's their destruction. And it's sad, my brothers and sisters, when you show up and people start scattling like roaches when you turn the light on. Come on, somebody. Because they don't want to be caught up in the lies with you. But let them keep on lying because what? They trap themselves with their own lips. And that's why I say tonight, stop giving the devil credit for stuff the devil had nothing to do with. All those lies you told, you just getting caught. Okay? And then it says, rumors are dainty morsels that sink into one's heart. Mm -hmm. Rumors. Rumors. If you don't know the facts, stay out of it. Now, Lady Holmes going to probably, I, I know she could throw a shoe through this phone. She would throw it through it. But, 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 but you know, when, when, when I would, would be sharing things that she says, well, what happened? When, when did this happen? Who was it? Baby, I don't know. And she's so quick to tell me, see, that's why I don't like for you to go get no information because you don't get the whole story. Well, guess what? The whole story is not for me to know. And what we've got to understand is because, guess what? Wait until it passes because some of that stuff is nothing but rumors. Drinking Clorox to cure COVID-19, that's a rumor. So what you got to understand is trust God because rumors can daint a person's reputation. Rumors can ruin a person's life. And what people take 10 years to build, one rumor can kill it in one day. Because everybody that say they love Jesus don't love Jesus. And everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is not going to enter into the gates of heaven. Because there will be some. He's going to say, depart from me. I don't know you, you the worker of iniquity. I don't know you. But we've got to understand, we've got the rumors. When people call you, don't you participate. Because the guess what? The receiver is just as bad as the thief. Oh, my God, my God. 
Oh, my God. I felt that one in my sanctified spirit. All right, let's go on. It says, a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. Now, Pastor, you got to break that down. Now, what, 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 what are they trying to say? Because, you know, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. Proverbs is the book of poetry. Proverbs is the book that we get clear understanding of things. It's put in simplicity for us. Now, I said, a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. Guess what? Because if you're lazy, it means you won't work. That's why the Lord fixes our man that don't work, don't eat. But if you're lazy, but you still yet want the comforts of a person that a person who's working has, y'all help me out with this Bible study. Talk back to me. If you lazy and you want something, you hadn't worked for it, what's your only ulterior motive you don't want? First of all, you're going to beg. And then if you don't beg, you're going to steal. So right then, it's leading you into destroying things. And one of the worst things you can do is destroy somebody's name. And as we look at that 10th verse, it says, the name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. Not Pastor Holmes. Not Leonard Debris. Not Lady Holmes. It says the name of the Lord is a strong fortress. In other words, when you call on the name of the Lord, it stops demons in their tracks. When you call the name, it stops things that meant to hurt you to back up and realize who they're messing with. And sometimes God don't show up because we don't call on him. And there's some of us, yeah, that, that some of us, we screen our calls. Mm -hmm. We screen our call. Oh, help me with this one, Holy Ghost. What if the Lord was to screen your calls because you don't call on them enough? And when your number pops up, it's a strange thing. Thank you, Minnie Parker. A wise man knows how to bridle his tongue. We can't say everything we want to say because it's not appropriate. Oh, let me move on. Let me move on. It says, the 11th verse says, the rich think of their wealth as a strong defense. They imagine it is it, it, it to be a high wall of safety. There's let me tell you something. There's some rich folks <laughs> thought they had a wall around them that COVID wouldn't touch them. There's some rich folks. They thought because they had all the money, whatever sickness came upon them, they would be able to buy the best treatment in the world. But I've come to tell you that that they, they, that, 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 that that's just an imagination. It's just, y'all remember that song, don't act too holy now. That song you say, it's just my imagination running away with me. That's what it is. So, so, so those who think your money is your strong defense, Ah, my, ah, let, let me correct you. I, I serve a God that can take 10 cents and multiply it. But you've got to know who you serve. That's why he says in his words, see him first and the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added. But it goes back up to the fact that uh, uh, y'all going to get rich by being lazy. And there's no quick way. There's no elevator to success. All of us got to take the stairs. There's no elevator to success. You got to climb every step by step by step. Because if you get it right, God will allow you to keep it right. Woo! If y'all heard me, if you get it right, God will allow you to keep it right. All right, then, 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 I want y'all to really hear 12, the 12th verse. Don't put no names on this thing. Don't call no names on this phone. 
But the 12th verse says, haughtiness goes before destruction. And haughtiness is a fancy word for bigoty. That's all it is. Haughtiness. When you so proud and I mean you so proud and so puffed up that you can't even see your own self. That's why I tell folks, take a look at the man in the mirror first. Because we all got some good points. We all got some bad areas. And that's why I put on, on the side, God has a medication for the thorns in your flesh. That medication is called grace. It is God's grace that keeps us. So haughtiness goes before destruction. Mm. Woo, God, I ain't going to say it online, but God, I thank you for that revelation. Then it says, humility precedes honor. Stay humble. Because if you stay humble, God is going to provide you honor. That's why some of the same folks who set out to destroy you had to come back and be entertained by you. That's why some of the same folks who tried to destroy you have had to knock on your door to ask for your assistance. Because if your humility is going to come before honor, everything that I have belongs to God. Everything that I have belongs to God. Everything that I have belongs to God. My children, are, as much money as I spend on them children, they don't belong to me. They belong to God. God entrusted me with them. As much as I love, my, I, I love my wife. As much as I may invest to make sure that my wife wants for nothing. My wife don't even belong to me. We are flesh of my flesh and born of my bone. But when God says, I'm about to do something else. Guess what? Arthur Holmes got to step back. And so we've got to understand that when, 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 we, when we walk with humility, we know that we can't even walk without the Lord holding our hand. We can't even talk without the Lord giving us the words. So you've got to understand that tonight. And <clears throat> verse 13 says, Sprouting off before listening to the facts. Oh, God, I'm going to shout right here. Sprouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and You have to sometimes, brothers and sisters, you need to listen to the facts. And that's why you don't argue with people when they're emotional. Because once you let those words come out, you cannot retract them. You can apologize till Jesus comes. Because I know what they were trying to tell us, but that's a lie. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words are never heard. That's a lie. There's some words that will do more harm than sticks and stones. So we've got to understand that sprouting off before listening to the facts, first of all, is shameful and is foolish. And number 14, when I was reading to, 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 to study today, this thing scared me, y'all. It scared me. It scared me because it's so, all of our God's word is true. But this one, oh my God, I've been saying it, but I've been saying it differently. Listen what that, seven, that 14 verse says. It says, the human spirit can endure a sick body. Let me read that again. A human spirit can endure a sick body. But who can bear a crushed spirit? That's why you be careful because you don't know if you're messing with somebody's spiritual walk. And when you crush people's spirit, they have written you off. My daughter likes to use the phrase, give me a fork. Because I'm about to stick it in it because it's done. And some of us 
have killed people with our words. Some of us have crushed people's spirit. Then we wonder why when we were in the building, you were the only one doing it and doing it and doing the work because you set it up like that. You talk mean to people. You talk rough to people. You try to huff people. You try to act like you were the only one who could do it. And guess what? After a while, folks, you know what? I don't deserve that abuse. You won't be the chairperson. You handle it. Y'all know I'm talking right. And so now that when God has given us this time away from the building, when we get back in the building, don't y'all be that way. Watch what you say. Because you don't know. There, 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 there was a lady at the church we passed. She used to always say at every time that had, if I've wounded any spirits, because she knew that if you wound somebody's spirit, that thing takes a while to recuperate. You don't know why some people left your church yet. Oh, God, pastor, you just turn on my street. You don't know why some people have not said anything to you in 10 years. Because you've crushed their spirit. You wonder why some people don't want to be around you. I know my faults. I don't need somebody reminding me of it. Guess what? The Lord shows me it almost every day so that I can get right and get right now. I don't need you reminding me because guess what? You got the dirt out of your eye before you bring Visine to take it out of mine. Oh, oh, Pastor Holmes stops. Notice what the 15th verse. God, I wish I can get more people to do like this 15th verse says. Intelligent people are always ready to learn. That's the word, y'all. I didn't make it up. It's, 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 it's Proverbs 18, 15. It says intelligent people, hallelujah, are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge, not gossip, not foolishness, not drama, but their ears are open for knowledge. That's why I say every day, and God knows I mean it, creating me a clean heart and renewing me the right spirit. Because intelligent people, y'all, wise people, smart people are always ready to learn. But when you think that you have arrived and nobody can tell you anything, you're more foolish than you realize. Because all of us, as long as we live, we can learn something. I don't care what anybody I can read the same scripture over and over and over and over and over. And every time I read it, the Lord reveals something else. Because that means there's still something else to be learned. I don't care how many times I can say the Lord is my shepherd. But I can go through something and when I read it the next time, it shifts the meaning. He's still the Lord. He's still a shepherd. But he's done something extra in between that makes me get a better look on what that scripture is saying. I shall not want. In other words, I'm not going to want for anything because I know that the Lord is my shepherd. And so therefore, intelligent people. How many of you want to be intelligent tonight? How many of you are intelligent? Now don't be haughty. <laughs> I caught you. Don't be haughty. Because I heard somebody just, just, somebody just said, he's talking about me right now. Yes, he's, he's talking about me. I'm the intelligent one. Yes. No. We all got room for what? For growth. And as much as you know, somebody knows more. And people don't like to hear this, but I always tell folks, if you're the smartest one in the group, change groups. If you're always the smartest one in the group, change groups. 
Because there's going to come a time people you're leading no, one, no longer wants to follow. And the people in your group no longer wants to grow. And if you're at the top of your game, it's time to shift innings. Remember we said this is the last quarter of 2020. The last quarter of 2020. And you Dallas Cowboys fans, y'all know, it's on Sunday, y'all know what the last quarter can do. It can bring you a victory. So what we've got to do, now it says, your gift, ah, oh my, 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 my God, your gift can open doors. It gives access to important people. Let me tell you, Stop name dropping. Just do the work. Stop saying just because you know so and so and so and so. It's not going to happen. Let me tell you something. I used to tell folks when I worked in HR all the time. I might can open the door for you to get in, but you got to work your behind the stand. But your gift will make room for you. Your gift will give you access. And, and, and I got some colleagues. I got some colleagues who think nobody can preach better than them. There's some folks who can sing. If I don't sing, the spirit won't fall. Die today. I guarantee you in this season, right outside the fence, right in the graveyard, somebody going to sound better than you did. So stop thinking that you can't be replaced. Stop thinking that you're the best person because all you got to do is give God the best that you have. And that same best that you've given will make room for you. Somebody helped all of us. And so when you get to the look what I've done, somebody helped you to achieve that. And we need to understand that. Okay? Now it says, the first to speak in court sounds right. Woo! Y'all, I'm about to shout right here. Let me move my bag because I'm about to shout right here. It says, the first to speak in court sounds right until the cross-examination begins. Ha, ha, ha! Somebody had a, a hearing these past two days. And everything she said sounded right. But guess what? She gets cross-examined tomorrow. So we've got to understand that just because people challenge us sometimes, it, we shouldn't get angry. Because we don't know everything. And sometimes when people challenge you, it makes you think about it even more. Because you might only be seeing one side of it. Oof. Okay. Flipping a coin and, and can end arguments. They don't play this now. But 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 how many of you I, I know I know me and Sister Raven in that club, but how many of you all remember when they used to flip a coin? And you used to call heads or tail while it was in the air. Uh-huh. And, and your team, if, if you said tails and the tails came, your team started playing. Your team had the first, first round of going. So guess what? Some of us will stand there and argue about who's going to start. The main thing is that you start the work. Start the work. Don't, if God has given you, and, and, and I know my wife tells me this is, a, this is, and this is something I'm working on. I'm being very transparent because let me tell you something. Nobody's going to use my weakness against me. Nobody's going to use my weakness against me. Cause see, I'll come clean in a minute and go and fall on my knees and ask God for forgiveness. One of my areas that I've got to work on is that I'm not going to sit there and beg people to do what is the right thing to do. Before I beg you, I'll do it myself. And we've got to understand that, 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 that flipping a coin can settle disputes between powerful opponents. We don't need to be bashing each other. 
If you wait in line, your turn is coming. I know I'm not making y'all shout to Jesus tonight. I know I'm not making y'all jump up and down, but I'm teaching you that you need to understand what comes out of our mouth, what our actions are, are sometimes detrimental to winning souls unto Christ. Because that's what it is. That's what it's all about. And what did I tell you all ago? Being a Christian is just one beggar telling another beggar about a man who got the bread. That's all. Because you're no better than I am because we're all saved by the what? Grace of God. And we've got to get out of the habit of thinking because we've got certain material things that we are above people. I saw a car yesterday when I was coming home. The dealership tag is still on the car. And it was broken on the side of the road. Steam coming out the hood. The dealership tag is still on the car. Pastor, what's your point? If it's man-made, it is subject to breakdown. But on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. We've got to understand. And in and, and verse 19, and I'm almost done because it's 7 to 50. I, I, I am not going to get through it. Oh, my God. Verse 19 says, and I think I'm going to let y'all go home on this one. Proverbs 18 and 19 says, an offended friend, listen to what it says now, an offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. That's why the Lord says, come, let us what? Reason together. And I'm telling you, some of us need to be careful of the folks who are bringing us the message. Because if you've got that much time on your hand, you bringing it to me so I can give you something else to take back. Now, I know this isn't going to be popular. I know this is going to be popular, but I got the word to back it up. Let me say this to some of you this morning. Let me, let me, let me this afternoon. Let me say this to some of you before we close. Stop thinking because you have all the gifts. You have the gift to preach. You got the gift to prophecy. You got the gift to speak in tongues. You got the gift to do all these kinds of things. Stop thinking that you got all the answers. You don't have all the answers. Now, the Bible says that God made us. And come on, my Bible readers. Y'all help me out with this. The Bible says that God made us a little, little lower than the what? Angels. If I'm talking right, send me a heart. Say amen on the phone. The Bible says that God made us a little lower than the angels. Right? Now, flip over where God says, no man knows the day nor the hour when I shall reappear. Not even the angels in heaven. So therefore, if the angels don't know everything, what makes you think you know everything? We all have something to learn. And when you stand there and argue, and let me tell you something, you sometimes run away a friend that someone that could have been a friend. Because let me tell you something, if every time I see you, you argue and I don't want to be your friend, I'm going to show myself to be friendly, but you are my acquaintance list. I'm trying so hard to get close to God. Then I'm not allowing foolishness to stop me. Now understand, I'm not so heavenly bound that I'm no earthly good because I've got to do some good down here. I got to do some good trouble down here. When I, when I, when I, when I cast my boat on the other day, and the lady looked at me strange. I said, I've done my part. Let me go get some red, some more. And I know what she was thinking. 
If he comes back through here, I got to watch it. Don't watch me. Watch the people I'm going to bring to vote. Because my car's not too good for nobody to sit in. I got some lights all after they get up. You have to understand. Somebody helped you. And you've got to stop. God help me tonight. I'm blessing someone. Stop wanting pay for everything that you do. If you get your reward down here, what reward do you have up there? Every time you open your mouth, gimme, gimme, gimme. What have you rendered unto the Lord? What shall I render? I'm with you, Sister Lajus. I don't want no negativity around me. I don't have time for it because I'm too blessed to allow these things to stop me from getting more because the closer I get to God, the sweeter it gets. Oh, God, I thank you. Even in the midst of my shortcomings, the closer I get to God, the sweeter I feel, the more at peace I feel. And the things that once bothered me, I don't let them bother me no more. But you got to face your truth. You can't be a know-it-all. You can't always be right. And you can't debate everything somebody brings to you. Because sometimes they're beating you to make you look foolish. All right, now I'm... I'm Going on. 20, I go, oh God, a 758. Okay. The 28th verse I'm going to read on. It says, wise words satisfied like a good meal. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. The right words will bring satisfaction. I say it all the time. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Because we've got to understand that everybody on this earth, I don't care how tough they are. Everybody has feelings. Everybody has emotions. And so you, when you tell them, oh, that thing don't hurt my feelings, then you probably the one whose feelings got hurt the most. Okay? But then notice what it says here now. The tongue can bring death or life. The tongue, the pink tornado, that thing that wags between your teeth can bring death or life. And I wonder if I can get at least seven people to say, I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. I've come too far from where I was to let foolishness separate me from God. I speak Life. And I don't care what anybody says. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy. Worthy is the lamb of God. I speak life. I can speak life to a dead situation. I speak life. When the, when, when, and I got to stop. When the, 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 the man brought his son to Jesus. Well, first he brought him to the disciples. And they couldn't heal him. But Jesus said one word and the boy got up. And then they, 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 the man said, well, why couldn't the people that following you do it? And he said, oh, ye of little faith. If we going to say we love God, we ought to walk like we love God. We ought to talk like we love God. We ought to serve others like we love God. We ought to do good deeds like we love God. We ought to help people like we love God. Because if we can help somebody as we pass along the way, that's when our living is not in vain. I speak life. I speak life over my health. I speak life over my finances. I speak life over my family. I speak life over those folks who are trying to trap me. I speak life. You got to learn how to speak life into a dead situation.
Let me help somebody and I'm done for the night. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Those who love to talk, you're going to reap the consequences. So you better know what you're talking about. You better have it right. And that 22nd verse says, the man, let me help, let me free some of you women right now. Men, don't y'all, don't, 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 don't y'all leave me. Because I really going to need y'all after that. Now, I'm reading the word, but now I'm going to really need y'all. That 22nd verse says, the man who finds a wife finds a good thing. And he receives favor from the Lord. Ladies, you wonder why you are number five? It's because you've been finding them. They should find you. Amen. Ooh, God, I thank you. Because I found mine. I sought mine. Tell you a little joke. She tried to play hard to get at first. But I knew what I wanted, Sister Lazarus. And I wasn't going to stop till I get it. But we got the men, we have to step up to the plate. Well, hello, my friend, Clarence Singleton. Clarence has been my friend since third grade. My, 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 my Lord. Woo! Good to see you. You found time for me and Jesus. I'll talk to you later about that. But it says the man that finds a wife finds a good thing. A good thing. And then he's going to receive favor from the Lord. Because when you find a good thing, you take care of a good thing. And when you take care of a good thing, woo! <laughs> God shows favor. Mm. The poor plead for mercy. The rich answer with insults. Now, I'm going to let y'all figure that one out. I'm going to give y'all 45 seconds to think about that one. <laughs> Somebody caught it. I'm going to give you 45 seconds to think about that one. It says, a poor pleads for mercy, but a rich will answer you with insults. I did. I did this. I did that. Uh-huh. Friends, and that's why the Lord had Clarence to come on. Clarence, Clarence Singleton, this last one puts confirmation on. It says, there are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Now, if Clarence and I have been friends since third grade now, yeah, right there at E.B. Ellington in Miss, in Miss Middleton class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third grade. And class is 55 now, y'all. <laughs> y'all know that's a long time. Because when you're in third grade, you should be eight. Maybe nine. And then you add, you y'all you, do the math. And class is 55. Y'all do the math to tell how long we've been friends. But class, you see what the word sealed it tonight? It says there are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Everybody that says they're your friend is everybody who's saying they're your friend is not because a real friend will stick closer than your own brother. That's the word. I didn't make that up. That's in Proverbs 18 and 24. That's how that proverb is summed up tonight, Reverend Reginald Smith. That's right. That's a real friend. Brother Reggie was that friend when I served as his pastor. Reggie didn't leave the church until I got ready to leave. And I know Reggie got tired waiting on me, but guess what? He was a friend, is a friend. We cannot make it in this world by ourselves. You got to show yourself friendly. 
Pastor, what are you trying to tell us tonight? Shut up and listen sometimes. Stop having all the answers. Lord, I repent for saying shut up. Be quiet sometimes. And listen to what God is saying. You don't have to always be right. Just be consistent. Just pray without ceasing. And I promise you, God will take care of you. That's Proverbs 18 tonight. I didn't make that up. That was no poetry I wrote. That's Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18 tells us. We have to sometimes learn how to, we have to pick our battles. Some things we just got to let it go. Power Some things we just got to realize is not worth fighting. It's not worth arguing over. It's not worth dealing with. I'm sorry. There's something that's just not worth handling. But learn sometimes just to hold your peace. And say, God, I turn this over to you. God, I put it in your hands. God, I know you will fix it. God, I know you will handle it. And God, if I hold my peace, my gift is going to make room for me. Ah, oh, God, my gift is going to make room for me, God. And if you do that, God will put people in your life bless you. I want a minute y'all got that tonight. It's time for us to leave, but I want you to understand. I want you to study to show yourself approved. Continue to know that there's nothing too hard for God. Continue to know that sometimes you just have to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Know that God is setting you up for a blessing. It's the last quarter. So much corruption is going on. But guess what? God's going to have the final say so. God's going to have the final word. God's going to have the final, final decree. And I don't know about anything else, but I can't lose with the stuff God uses. God, I thank you. We're going to close with this song and then we're going to pray. God, you are my strength. In the power. I need some folks as we leave just do hashtag last quarter. 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 Strength like no other. That's it. Hashtag last quarter. This is the last quarter of 2020. God is going to turn some things around. Woo! I don't care how you try to rig it. God's going to turn it around. Strength like no That's it. God's going God, 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 God's going to turn it around. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for a blessed night. We thank you for your uncompromised word that is going forth tonight. God, help us to bridle our tongue. Help us to speak peace. Help us to speak love. And God, help us to first show ourselves to be friendly so that you can send that friend that we need. God, I speak healing tonight. I speak blessings. I speak deliverance. 
Most of all, God, I speak that you anointing fall fresh on us one more time. God, give us because the blood still works. God, give us and forgive us. Mm, give us and forgive us. Forgive us and give us. Help us, dear God, to just do what is right in your sight. And God, you'll take care of the rest. You be encouraged tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want you all to know that Lady Holmes and I, we love you. Holy Trinity Amy Church is just the place. Our motto for 2020, 2021 is we are the church that's changing lives day by day. The church that's changing lives day by day. And if each one of us make it a point to reach somebody else and tell them about the goodness of Jesus, just think how this world would be. Make sure you go out and vote. Make sure that you are helping people to vote. And I can't tell you who to vote for, but if you want to know, hit me up. Because God is going to turn some things around. Because if his people that are called by his name will humble them, seek and pray, turn from our wicked ways. God said he's going to heal the land. And I believe, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Y'all have a blessed night. I got to go. Y'all know I can talk. Y'all know I love to talk. Y'all know when I'm talking about Jesus, I get excited. I get excited. I get excited because nobody can do me like Jesus. Nobody. But I got to let you go because I want you to come back next week. I want you to come back Sunday morning. But just know that God is in the blessing business. And as you go tonight, go knowing this. God bless you. May the peace of God be with you. Lady Holmes and I love you. And there's not a thing you can do about it. God bless you. Remember this as you go tonight. One person shouting with me, Jesus. Ah, can I get at least one person to shout with me? Woo. Well, I'm gonna let you go, but I gotta get my shout on. Jesus said, if you lean on me. Jesus said, if you lean on me. Woo. Jesus said, if you lean on me. I won't let you fall. Annie Holmes, we just got to lean on him. Ah, oh, sister girl, just lean on him. Woo! Sister Hines, just lean on him. Sister Leona Frazier, lean on him, honey. I won't let you fall. Y'all better go on and have some good time tonight. I'm all fired up.
You don't have to serve your God, but I'm going to serve my God. And I don't have to wait till Sunday morning. I can praise him right now.